Good morning. My name is Carrie Paleo, and I am the proud executive director of the Greater Utica Chamber of Commerce, as well as your host for the Leveling Up podcast. This week is National Small Business Week, and our Catalyst Young Professionals Group has been reaching out to small businesses throughout this week to celebrate them, um, give them a little bit of publicity for the things they do, um, whether it's um, small businesses who are extremely community-oriented and very involved with giving and nonprofits, or people who've been innovative and rolled up their sleeves and found a need to fulfill in the community. So earlier this week, our Young Professionals Group met with two small Small businesses, Home Sweet Home, which is a cleaning agency that focuses, um, has a special place in their hearts for cleaning homes for cancer patients, um, and they work with a national nonprofit to do that. Uh, yesterday, we were at Monarch Banquets. They celebrated their one-year anniversary um, of taking ownership of their family-owned business and running it more as a banquet facility. Today, we'll be visiting with Three Brothers Seal Coating this afternoon. And tomorrow, uh, we're doubling up with two businesses, Lafa Mediterranean and the Beer Hub on Genesee Street. So we hope that you celebrate all of your favorite small businesses and give them a little bit of extra love this week. Uh, upcoming things that are happening at the Chamber that we want to make sure you're aware of. Uh, we're always celebrating um, businesses. Last night we were at Slocum Dixon. Um, they expanded into the business park with a new state-of-the-art facility. Um, absolutely gorgeous renovation interior. Really focusing um, there on women and children's services. So you'll find pediatrics, OBGYN, um, the Breast Health Center, um, the highest level of technology with imaging. Uh, Dermatology is there as well. Uh, so there are some services um, for for all, all sorts of people there. Um, but it's a beautiful new facility, and we encourage you to take a look. Um, as our city grows, one of the things that's very important is to have the most up-to-date uh, health care as possible. We even had one young lady who said, maybe I'll consider getting pregnant to have a baby and come, come visit this, uh, this center. So uh, really just beautiful facility. But we'll also be celebrating some uh, upcoming businesses as well with ribbon cuttings. Next week, um, we are... May, the week of May 15th, New Hartford Wellness on Monday and celebrating the one-year anniversary of T5 Insurance uh, that week on Wednesday as well. So make sure you check our website for all of that. Something that's really exciting that we want to talk about uh, with our What's Upstate project, whatsupstateny.com, uh, we finally launched a job board. Um, we've had so much outpouring of support for that. So if you are an HR professional who's looking for another way to secure talent, um, this is a wonderful opportunity for you. Uh, go to whatsupstateny.com. Uh, you can reach out to Sean on our team for more information. Um, but not only can you have your job showcased within this website, uh, the job available, jobs that you have available at your company on this website, but you have all of the pieces to attract talent there as well. So it's really a one-stop shop for you. And it's very hands-off and very easy. So this tool will go to your website, scrape the jobs you have available, and put them on and off as you list them. So it's extremely hands-off, a very useful tool for your company and organization. Uh, upcoming business after hours we have will be at the CMY Conservancy Center this month on May 24th. And they've got some news that they're going to be sharing that day, so you want to make sure you're getting registered for that. Uh, in June, we'll be at the Beer Garden, um, and I know that's going to be a wonderful time uh, on Flag Day. Uh, if you haven't been to the Beer Garden, the brewery is expanded, and they've got great outdoor space to really um, enjoy community there. Um, and in July, we'll be at the Utica Zoo, July 25th, so make sure you mark your calendar for that. Talk about marking your calendar. We have one week up until the end of next week for early bird registration for Choo Choo. I believe we only have 10 slots available. So if you want that early bird discount and you want to get aboard the train for the most fun golf tournament you've ever been a part of, uh, make sure you do that. Um, here with me today uh, is Diane Stancato for the YWCA, um, and she's here to talk about the mission and some really cool new programming that this is your second year of doing uh, with The Sky's the Limit, yes. so we're really excited yes. to talk about yes. that. Really excited about The Sky's the Limit, and yeah. thank you for inviting me here today. Yeah. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about the Y's mission. It's kind of changed and evolved over the years. I know, you know, when I was younger, I'd take my grandma mother drove my grandmother to the pool a couple times for swim lessons, which you guys no longer own, but you've kind of evolved to fit a different need in the community. Right, right. Well, that's the beauty of the YWCA is that we change with the times. 
and we grow with what women and girls uh, need from us to, to thrive. So yes, at one point it was a gym and a pool and all kinds of cool things like that. And now, and the mission has always been the same, to eliminate racism and empower women. So uh, that hasn't changed. It's how we deliver on that mission that has changed. And um, in the 80s, we got involved in the domestic violence sexual crisis service um, realm. And that is really where we spend most of our time uh, now, working in that field, uh, along with prevention education uh, and wraparound services uh, around the, those topics, child advocacy, those types of things, so, and, and our racial justice work. Yeah, and the impact of what you do is so wide. Um, when we were talking numbers, I have I have a number sheet and just the volume of response that you're meeting the need in the community. Tell us a little bit about yes. how many employees you have and how wide reaching those employees <laughs> work and the number of calls they answer. When you think about it, we have less than 50. We, we hover around 50. We should really have 100. <laughs> uh, but we hover around 50 employees because we can't attract talent and keep it, you know, how that our market is right now. Uh, and um, we had over 70,000 incidences of service in 2022. Yeah. So 50 staff, not not all of them doing direct service, uh, and 70,000 times that we uh, helped someone. Uh, it might be multiple times we helped one person, but that is a lot. Yeah. And we cover the landmass of the entire county of Oneida and Herkimer County with uh, child advocacy and sexual assault services in Herkimer County. Yeah, so really the work you do is incredible and, and it's, a, it's an unmet need here um, that you continue to answer the call to. So, Thank you. But you talk a little bit about how prevention services, and so this is a little bit where Sky's the Limit comes in for, for the young girls, right? Yes, yes. So let me talk a little bit about prevention. So we know when you're talking about domestic violence, we know that ending violence against women truly rests with men because often it's gender-based violence. So how do we change that story? So we, we serve women and girls and all genders who are going through crisis right now, but how do we prevent it? And, and that is with children. We start with children. So we have our Men Together program, and that's for young men. That's middle and high school boys. Okay. And, um, and they learn how their actions and, uh, and how society has taught them to maybe treat women or how they've seen women treated isn't really the right thing. And they learn about healthy relationships and about just being a better a better boy, a better man, a better person. And is that a school-based program or how do you deliver that program? It's a club-based program and it's in, we're in a couple schools. So during lunch or after school, uh, we work really closely with the Young Scholars Program, which we're proud of that partnership. Yeah. So but while you're talking to the boys, you gotta talk to the girls, right? So that the girls understand what the heck's going on now. Yeah. So uh, we created last year our education team Team, sky's the limit for girls, which I'm very excited about also because it's um, it's a place where girls can just be themselves. They can meet professional women. Women, last year we had a panel of women who the girls were just enamored by them. They asked them a million questions. Women who came up with, you know, through poverty, who, you know, went to college, didn't go to college, who are successful, who are still trying to be successful, who own businesses. It was really dynamic. Yeah. And along with some leadership classes, and this year we have Denali partners uh, coming in mm -hmm. uh, to do some classes with the girls. We're holding at Griffiths Institute this year in partnership with them. So um, I hope girls sign up for this. Yeah, and one of the things that I think is extremely important, especially for parents, if you're listening or know a young girl who could be involved, is that transportation's provided. Yes. So you have all the wraparound services. Transportation's yes. provided, food's going to be there, yes. there is no cost to participate. And, and they actually pick you up at your door. It's not that you have to right. come to, you got a school bus that will, somebody's gonna be doing the routing of that. And so it's extremely accessible. It is, uh, because uh, sometimes people are like, oh, Rome, you know, it's, it's so far, but we're gonna take care of all that for you. Yeah. And um, it's, as, as you said, it is free. Registration opens May 15th, and the event is July 15th. So we're, we're still in the planning stages. And every girl gets a really cool Alex and Ani bracelet that they made. Sky's, oh. it's, it's Sky's the Limit. It's the bracelet. Nice. It's so cute. I love the bracelet. You know, I get all excited <laughs> about things like that. So, well, we're uh, girls, right? We yeah, like our jewelry. You know, we like our hey, hair. We, we own like it. Our, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I loved the program. Can't wait to go uh, this year again and, and watch those girls um, really open up. Everybody's a little awkward in the morning. 
you know, like everybody's getting there. Maybe they don't know each other. Many don't. They don't know each yeah. other. And then, yeah, we do some ice breaking. We, I have great education, a great education, fabulous. And it, everybody sort of loosens up. And by the end of the day, we have new friends. Yeah. yeah. So do you expect repeats from your girls who came last year? Or is this open to, is this you're trying to reach more? We'd or love to reach look? a lot more girls. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, open to to all, all girls. Um, we, we've been pushing it at both seasons in the school districts with the guidance counselors, just trying to get the word out there that we're doing this program again. And there were girls last year who said, oh, my gosh, I hope you do this again. Good. So we're changing it up so that it's interesting yeah. every year. Okay. Yeah. So what other programs that are coming up that people need to know about? I know you just had your Take Back the Night Day in Herkimer. Mm -hmm. uh, you recently just did that, and that's an annual event. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of events. We're not really event-driven. Uh, we do this our big salute event, which we just uh, com finished in March. We moved that to March because it's Women's History Month. It mm -hmm. used to be in April. Uh, honored eight fabulous women. They're all, was fa every year they're fabulous. I, you need to put Kleenex on all the table <laughs> um, because it's the one thing is that the people are so open and tell heartfelt I stories know. and it's so moving um, being at that event. It just kind of really like recharges you. Yes, the, the women are everything. And they're so, some of them are so nervous to get up there and talk about themselves because they're humble. And even when I call them to tell them, hey, you know, you've been selected, they're like, what? Why? Yeah. <laughs> they're very humble. So uh, I love that day. Uh, that is, um, our business is really serious. And that is that is a day where we are really light and it, it's a fun day. So yeah. We, and you always have a youth a youth that yes, you outstanding too, youth, and that's youth. we added a couple years ago, uh, because we're about women and girls. Yeah. So we added that, and I come from the Girl Scouts. I worked for the Girl Scouts for a long time, so I'm really about empowering girls to yeah. find their voice. Yeah. So Diane, tell me a little bit about you and what you do in your job to empower your employees. Oh well, you know, it's all about women and girls. So those guys that work for us, I feel really sort of bad for them. <laughs> Well, they probably have women and girls in their lives that they, they need do. to honor somehow. And I'm sure that, you know, through your leadership, they get a good reflection on how to do that. Well, I hope so. I think we drive them crazy. But uh, it's, you know, we have a culture at the YWCA, a support and of empowerment, of team, um, a real sense of belonging. And we we really, that spreads out into all of our areas. You know, we have staff um, at scattered sites all over the place. And that, that culture carries out there. And that culture, because of that culture uh, and of inclusion and, and acceptance, that helps us serve clients yeah. who are coming in and they're in crisis. And, um, and it, they come into a space where there's a feeling of hope yeah. where there's a feeling of warmth. And, uh, and I hope that's what they feel because trauma is hard. Yeah. And I know you talk a little bit about culture and before you mentioned, you know, retaining employees. So what specific things do you do in terms of your work culture that makes uh, the Y such a great place to work? Because your employees talk very highly of you. Oh, well, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you very much. I, 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 I pay them to say that stuff. <laughs> so uh, are they, uh, the, um, we offer remote um, work based on your position mm -hmm. and, and uh, we offer, uh, we have one of the very best, if not the best, retirement plan oh. in, in the country. Wow. So uh, back in the 30s, Ro the Rockefeller family started a retirement fund for the YWCA, uh, National YWCA. Uh -huh. And that is, uh, we are all included in that. And so um, Y National and we put in 10.5% wow. into someone's retirement fund so if you may not if you're 25 that doesn't mean anything to you <laughs> because that's not a great recruitment tool when they're younger uh, but like, it is when you think about return on investment yes, of your money yes that's <laughs> getting without, young that's without you putting anything in you can also put your own money in but uh but i think that um as people get settled in or someone who's a little bit thinking more about the future they're like wow i i don't i know get that anywhere we have great benefits as far as um, time off and uh personal time sick time and we just, in general, support one another and believe that if you are empowered um, and you are treated well, that you, in turn, will be um, the best employee. Yeah. And that's how that I treat people as I want to be treated. Yeah. And, and the world of work has really shifted lately and, and become a little bit more personal. And we blur the lines, I think, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think post-pandemic world has kind of enabled that to, to see 
the person beyond the worker and, and make yeah. sure that you're meeting all of their needs. And, I, and mental health is so important in doing is. the work that you do. Yes, we offer EAP. We have a lot of staff that need to take advantage of that. We see some really hard, terrible things, uh, especially the advocates. That's the, uh, it's an 18-month turnover rate for our advocates because, you know, they're working in that, um, that environment of pain, you know, and, and, and um, trauma. So, uh, so it's difficult. So we try to do as much as we can to help them. And again, time off. We encourage people, take your time, go get, go, whatever, whatever it is that relaxes you, go do it, right? And sometimes we offer some little spiss for that. So, you know, here's a little bonus, do whatever makes you happy. If you like to go climb mountains, go climb mountains. If you like to go to a spa, go to a spa. Yeah. We'll random give days off, you know, that kind of thing, because people need it. It's a hard job. Yeah, it really is. Though the people, my staff, are heroes. Yeah, they are the givers. They are the helpers, and I am so proud to work with them. Yeah, that's fabulous. Really, um, really moving that you you do the work that you do, yeah. um, because it's not easy, as you say. Mm -mm. No, it's so. not. It's not. I respect them, and um, and even when people leave, they usually come back. <laughs> 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 They'll leave for a little while, and then we yeah. get their resume back. I'm like, oh, look, they want to come oh. back. It's always a good sign when someone wants to come back. Yeah, yeah. Because they find that the grass might not be greener on the other side. So. Right. Yeah. Um, so the title of this podcast is Leveling Up Podcast. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about what you've done recently, either to level up personally or professionally, um, to kind of bring yourself and your business and organization to that next level. Oh, sure. So a couple things. I was fortunate enough to be selected to attend the Kellogg Leadership Institute, um, and uh, it was a it was a with my board president at the time, and it was a six month long uh, leadership experience uh, that was a, a, a granted to me, which I was really excited about, and um, really um, enhanced my ability to lead. I believe, uh, and there was a, a real focus on racial justice in that. Um, leadership class mm -hmm. and we're doing I'm very proud of the racial justice work the social justice work that we do at the YWCA our board um, for the longest time was every board meeting was watching at least a two to three minute video about a topic like microaggressions um, equality versus equity uh, and you know just some different t subjects having conversations about them even during COVID even when we were in Zoom we would break out into rooms and have conversations about these topics yeah. and I like the idea of using video to really introduce the subject mm -hmm. and then get in deep it, it's very it's it's a lighter way to approach it and then it starts the conversation. Now I would drop in, and sometimes they'd be talking about their dogs and their, you know, kids and whatever. But we get <laughs> off at least, topic. Yeah, get but off at topic. least. But you know what? That's good though because we got people talking about mm -hmm. all kinds of things, and then they evolved into that, right? So the, so it was really great. I, I'm very proud of it. We had uh, Phyllis Breeling come in and work with us uh, in racial justice work, and it's uh, it, inclusiveness and and equality uh, in our business is top. Yeah, it's a top priority. Yeah, and tell me about the work that you do in that area a little bit more, because mm -hmm. um, we kind of covered what you did with girls. We talked a little bit about what your caseworkers do, but tell me a little bit about in the social justice, well, what different things that you're doing. Sure. Well, we partner with other uh, agencies who take the lead on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, uh, Indivisible Mohawk Valley, if there's something that we have a like-minded agreement about, abortion rights, you know, those sorts of things. We follow the national platform mm -hmm. for those big f social justice mm -hmm. uh, uh, messages. Uh, it's really important that we stay on the same page because as you may or may not know, we are a part of a much larger organization. Yes. So we are one of 200 associations in the United States here 130 years over, 130 years right here in Mohawk Valley. Uh, y National has been uh, in business over 160 years. And then, of course, we are global, 140 countries across the world. Yeah. So we are the largest women's organization in the world focused on racial justice in women and girls. Phenomenal. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm very proud of the work that we do uh, here nationally and globally. Yeah. 
I know your team sent you with some like cheat notes. Was there anything that we didn't cover <laughs> that we that we really want to make sure that while we have here on this platform that you want to get out today? Well, you should, yeah, they give me notes. They, yeah. I don't know why they don't trust me. Don't I seem <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about? I don't know. I got notes too. Don't worry, Diane. <laughs> well, I you know just talking about our prevention education. So we talked about amend and we talked about sky's the limit. We also do prevention education in schools. So um, healthy relationships. You know, don't be a bystander, anti-bullying, uh, and we're in a lot of local school districts doing that work. So I'm proud of that also. So it isn't uh, only, uh, it, it's broad what right. we do in, in those ways. Uh, and our crisis work, our, our, our hotlines, I don't ever want people to forget that that's where you come if you need help. If you're in a crisis situation, sexual assault, domestic violence, you suspect child abuse, uh, call our hotline. Yeah. Talk to someone who's trained to talk you through it, make sure that you're safe, and get you help. Yeah. Can you throw up their website so people can get access to the hotline number? Perfect. Yes, yes thank you. Uh, yes, so, um, so knowing that, knowing our services. So we are wraparound services. It's not just a hotline. Yeah. It's support in the court systems. It's support for the medical advocacy. Uh, we do. We have housing programs. We have part. Yeah. We we'll get um, women and their families and all genders uh, have suffered in domestic violence um, into an apartment, and we pay for that for two years through grants. Yeah. So it's a. You're a good connector, a good resource. If somebody doesn't know where to go or the questions mm -hmm. to ask, mm -hmm. you're. Your hotline can help. My hotline can help, and if it, if it's not something that we do necessarily, we will find you a place. We'll send you to two one one. We'll we'll refer you to another agency that we know does that work. So uh, so we are friends with a lot of with all the nonprofits and the yeah. businesses yeah. that that support. Yeah, because you need a team of support around you, especially yes. when you're going through tough times. It's a yes. It's it's really tough, yeah. um, and we. We see a lot, and the numbers continue to grow, yeah. uh, and I, at least the reported numbers. So, um, you know, I, I know I talk to people, and they're like, why do you think that is? And I think, well, I hope it's because we're out here and we're talking about it so more people are coming forward mm -hmm. and, and getting help rather than there's more right. happening. So right. I'm going with people are coming forward because they know where to go. They're more so. comfortable saying something. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for the work with you do and for being here with me today. Um, I think, you know, we've come a long way, but there's so much more to go. And you'll continue. We know that you'll continue to evolve and change and grow as the needs of women and girls change and, you and can, grow. You can bet on that. Absolutely. So just a few things we need to cover. Uh, we got some great member news, uh, things coming up in the area that you want to be uh aware of. If you don't have plans tomorrow, it's Cinco de Mayo. Uh, m and Bank is hosting the Mohawk Valley Latina Association for a really fabulous event tomorrow um, right in the bank downtown. Uh, there's a derby party a derby party at Five Points on Saturday, so if you're not lucky enough to be heading off to Kentucky this weekend, you can celebrate with our friends there. Um, we've got a couple of galas coming up. Um, our friends at the Ark next Friday night. Uh, there's still tickets available in the Rotary Club in June. They both have tickets available for their upcoming events. Uh, talking about women and girls, uh, Mother's Day is coming up next weekend. Uh, Ryan, my son, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> two different opportunities. Uh, First Source Federal Credit Union has their plant sale on May 10th and 13th. And Blue Truck Wine and Liquor has wonderful gifts for mom. I checked out a few things there. Uh, so make sure not to forget mom next weekend. Um, of course, we have to thank our sponsors for this podcast who are offer us the support to be able to do these things and share these stories. Uh, for Source Federal Credit Union and Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield. Thank you so much um, for sponsoring our podcast. And of course, thank you to our platinum sponsors who uh, support absolutely everything we do at the Chamber. AmeriQ, uh, the Kelberman Center, Master Vito Hyundai, MVHS, and StaffWorks, thank you for your unending support. Take care and stay kind, Utica.